Hi, I'm Rob, and today we're at the Royal Oak in North Gawley. So the Royal Oak was once a, a royal hunting lodge, and it dates back to the 17th century. So we start our walk heading away from the Royal Oak. So right next to the pub is a, a cottage being re-thatched. And I've come across this chappy who's the thatcher. Hello mate, how are you? Hey, hello, yeah, good, thank you. So what, what thatching company are you with then? Uh, JR Thatching. Oh right, is that your own company? Or? Yes, yes it is. Oh, superb. Okay, well, lots of questions about thatching. I see you've got the piles of thatch there behind you. Um, so, what sort of reed is that and, and how long would it last on a, a roof like that? Um, that's a Norfolk reed and it will last probably between 30 to 50 years. Oh, that's good going then, isn't it? Yeah, if, if you're lucky, depending on where the house is and, you know, the trees and the weather throughout the years. Yeah, so there's, there's different reeds that last different amounts of time then? Yeah, there's quite a few different reeds. There's N59, there's Trichicale, there's Wheat Reed, there's oh, crikey. Norfolk Reed, there's Water Reed. So. Yeah, normally we stick to what's on the insurance. Yeah, on this yeah. Insurance. Now, speaking of insurance, I mean, are they sort of fire retardant in any way? Are they treated um, or...? No, you can treat them. You can get them treated. Yeah. But we're actually putting an irrigation system ah. on this one, which is a, quite a new... That sounds very clever. Well, <laughs> yeah, this would be the first one, so it'll be very new. Oh, right. So we have a sprinkler system, so if any fire happens, it will put itself out. Yeah. Smashing. Well, thank you very much. Very interesting. No, thank no. you. We're opposite the cottage that's being thatched. And there's a bog, so wear your wet foot gear. And under that tree, and the path goes up under there. Here we go. Good luck, Rob. This is really, really muddy. There's the farm over there. Unless it's been a really dry day, don't go this way. Go back down the road. Turn left on the road and go up Buddles Hill, which will take you to the same place. At the top of the track, we turn right. Let's take this track into the woods. And at the gate, just follow the path along the fence line. So when you reach the house and the gate, Take this path off to the left. So we come up through the undergrowth and there's a nicely defined path here which we follow. We're walking across Gawley Common and at the end of Gawley Common is Gawley Hill, Iron Age Hill Fort which uh, there's not a lot of evidence for because it was destroyed by gravel extraction. So very tricky, but as the path leads round to the left, there's a tiny little path leading off there, which we follow. And we're heading straight on past those gates. And there's the little gate we're looking for. Come out of the end of the path. And we're turning right into the lane. Now we're at South Gawley. This is the old schoolhouse. Now the name Gawley means a triangular wood or clearing. It's up the signpost. We're going to turn left. So we turn off the road onto this gravel track and there's a stile there just to the right of that garage. We follow the footpath down there. So at the stile, the path should go straight across, but there's a fence. So I'm guessing we're going to have to loop around it to the left and right. So we're heading for the stile in the hedge. 
So we're over the stile out of the field. We're turning right onto the gravelled lane and then left onto that gravelled lane there. So very, very easy to get lost here. The path goes through the middle of that uh, chalet bungalow. So it says that uh, we used a bit of common sense and went down towards the farm and cut round through the gate. There are no signs, but it is a public right of way. And we headed for what we thought was a stile. And it is a very badly overgrown one. But uh, yeah, this path needs marking out a bit better, I think, and enforcing a bit. So just contrast this. The landowner here has got it clearly signed, nice style. The path goes along the edge of their paddock and down that we've got to follow. Compare that to the, the pickle that we've been on down the other one. Hey, you're cute. So we've got a bit of garden hopping going on. And now we're on to the long distance Avon Valley Path. So the Avon Valley Path is 34 miles long and it runs between Salisbury and Christchurch. So this great lake is Blashford Lakes Nature Reserve part of it. But during the war, it was known as RAF Ibsley. There's a lot on the internet about RAF Ibsley, so I'll just give you a brief outline. Uh, it was created in the 1930s, late 30s, as war was looming. And uh, it was the RAF station there originally, and then the United States Army Air Force, uh, and it was primarily a fighter base. Uh, closed in 1947, and then during the 50s and 60s, it was excavated for gravel. And then when the gravel pits closed, the uh, nature reserve was formed. But uh, yeah, back in the war, you'd have seen fighters screaming over your head and landing actually where that lake is now. We're following the Avon River Path sign. So there's a green sign there. And we go through this gate here. And pretty soon the path emerges out on the main ring with the Salisbury Road at Ipley Bridge. So we cross the bridge over the River Avon and we follow the Avon River path through here. So we come away from the river at this point. We're going straight on. Turning right here. threshing machine there. So we come across the field, onto the road we're going to turn right. So I said right, I very definitely meant left. So a little further along the lane and there's the footpath on the right. And keep on going past Cobbley Cottage. Keep going down the gravel path. So lovely collection of 
thatched houses at the end of the road. Gonna turn right. So heading down towards the farm on the left, it's the style Avon Valley path again. And we cross over the bridge. So, come down that road, past the farmhouse, follow the green signs, River Raven Walk or River Valley, Avon Valley Walk, and follow off into the field. Watch out for man-eating natives in here. There's lions and tigers. <laughs> or more to the point, great holes where there's lots of water. Aha! Oh, you gods. Like going through the jungle swamps now. There you go. <laughs> Two or three inches of water. <laughs> on the path below this and all this grass with stingers either side oh folks I wholeheartedly don't recommend this walk <laughs> but I'm going to publish the darn thing all the same a lot of work has gone into making this so you've got to come and walk it <laughs> you won't like it but you'll make me happy that I haven't wasted my time I can't believe but this is the Avon Valley River Path and people walk this long distance. I've done it years ago. It must have been a drier period because I don't remember it like this. Look at Trev ploughing his way through the alligator oh, swamp. <laughs> a mere trifle. Dry feet mate. Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> Look at the state of this. This is at the end of July. Yeah. Uh, well, middle of, stop yelling. This is the middle of July. And it is waterlogged as hell. Don't ever, ever do it in the winter. And be very choosy about when you do it in the summer. But this doesn't look like it dries out that often. Oh boy. So here we are, there's another post with the uh, sign on the Avon Valley Walk. The paths are pretty non-existent for a long distance footpath. It's like walk through the jungle. It's obliterated, not non-existent. <laughs> oh. oh, finger post and a style. I'm not going to bother to climb the style. Oh God. Mr. Ward has just informed me that there's a Ford there. Yeah. You'll be all right, son. It might not go all the way. It's going to be a Ford Fiesta. But you can jump that last bit. Jesus. <laughs> this walk is sent to try us. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, it's 
seating as well. Whoa. Dodgy or what? Yeah. Dodgy, dodgy, dodgy. How far down does the plank go? Oop, oop. Oop. What's that? A firm? Ah, oh, not too bad then. Not too bad. Uh, oh, quite awesome. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Ah. Mind your t shirt on the barbs. This is familiar territory, isn't it? <laughs> Spend our life doing this, Mr. Ward, don't we? Oh. Yeah, oh, right. oh yeah, there we go. Good. <laughs> And the last bit is fairly civilised. <laughs> Apart from the massive gap between this bridge and the thing wing up on the bank here. Oh, this walk is one for the enthusiasts, I tell you. Please God, that's the last of the bogs. Shed loads of herons. Just here. There's one still in the sky you might be able to see. Anyway, at this point, you can go two ways, and we're going to go to the right. But if this walk wasn't ow, ow, <laughs> devised by Beelzebub himself, mm. ow, <laughs> I would be surprised. We've had stinging nettles hidden in boggy marshes, ow, ow, now we've just got ow, <laughs> thistles in plain sight. Oh, Christ! Multiple stabs as you're walking along. Whoever plotted this walk out has got a great sense of humour. Oh, so here we are. Middle of the bridge. Looking down on the River Avon. So this is the River Avon. It's the Avon Valley Walk. Uh, the River Avon, it, it rises in the Vale of Pusey in Wiltshire and it runs all the way down to Christchurch um, and where Hengersbury Head is, that's where the, the Avon runs out into, uh, into the Solent. Uh, it's a distance of about 60 miles and on the way it's fed by the rivers Bourne, Nadder and Ebel. Now, one thing I've read that I'm not quite sure of, it seems a bit odd to me, but apparently this famous, this famous, this river is quite famous because sometimes in the winter you get anchor ice. Now anchor ice is ice that's submerged and stuck fast to the bottom and growing up. Just seems a, a little bit odd to me. Not sure what's going on over there with that reed waggling. I don't know why that reed's wobbling over there. Anything's possible on this walk. Alligators. So now we have trial by cow parsley. <laughs> Mind that dip, Trev. Cow parsley stinging that horse. Oh, and the odd thorn thrown in. Ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> Are we nearly there yet? <laughs> so, quite a big commercial concern fish farm over there. Isn't there? guy out there is chucking the feed in. You just see the water and all the fish are coming up to feed. Probably trout I'd imagine. It's certainly a big enough site. Lots of fish room to feed. And over there looks like a converted mill to me. Into flats or something. So that was Trafalgar Fisheries and I was speaking to a young lady in there and she says they rear mainly brown trout. Anyway, we're going to come out and turn right, head in towards Bicton. So this is Bicton Mill. It's been developed into new flats.
footpath goes off towards the right. If you stand back against the fence line, Oh, you'll shoot them past us. A little bit of sheep rustling. <laughs> Here they come. <laughs> Brilliant, thanks ever so much. <laughs> So we're not turning off, we're carrying straight on. So Trev is crossing this stile and he's going to cross the main road, hopefully he won't get run over. And straight through the bushes the other side. So here we go now, we're walking through the oats. It's trial by oats. <laughs> no footpath signs or anything, a vaguely discernible path. Look at the deer lying down over there in the corn. There they go, hoppity hoppity hop. So we're on our home straight now, back to the uh, back to the pub. One hell of a walk. Um, I, I can't describe every twist and turn we've made. There's too many of them. There's footpaths that are hidden and people have sort of changed the course of them. There's footpaths that are just reeds <laughs> that you've got to plunge through. And uh, it's not a walk for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. But we are nearly back to the pub. There can't be too many more nasty surprises. Well, here we are, back at the Royal Oak. And that was a... Horrendous walk. <laughs> you have to be mad to do this walk. The footpaths are boggy. I'd seriously leave it until a drought before you try it. Um, they're overgrown in a lot of places, badly signed. But for those of you that like a challenge, have a go. It's about eight miles. It feels like about 15, but it's eight. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, as much as we enjoyed making it, then please think about liking and subscribing and perhaps I'll catch you on the next one. And perhaps the next one will be a better one. Thank you.